Hi, in this set of podcasts, we're going to look at two different reactions, elimination reactions and substitu substitution reactions, which compete with each other. And instead of looking at a specific functional group like we've done before, we are going to look at two different functional groups. And you need to realize that both of these reactions occur in lots of different functional groups. And you will see them again when you when we talk about alcohols and then when you talk about ethers. So right now we're going to look at the two functional groups of the alkyl halides and many times when you think about alkyl halides you'll see them written as Rx. R of course stands for an alkyl group and X stands for fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Or we will be looking at alcohols. ROH. Now, there are all sorts of different things that will decide whether one reaction will win the competition. We'll be looking at what's called the leaving group, which is either the X, the hal halogen, or the OH. OH is not a very good leaving group, so we'll have to fix that. Steric hindrance has to do with how big the alkyl group is. Nucleophilicity is one of the reactants, and when you look at nucleophilicity and basicity, they sort of go hand in hand. Nucleophilicity is really a measure of the Lewis basicity of a base, whereas when I talk about basicity, it's the ability for a base to pull a proton. They are related to each other. And then we will have to introduce solvent because solvent will help you determine whether one reaction wins. So you will also have to remember throughout this whether one stereoisomer, that's called stereoselectivity, is produced or whether one constitutional isomer, uh, that's what regioselectivity is produced. So this little side is an overview of the two reactions. Elimination reactions create alkenes from alkyl halides or alcohols. So if we look, here's an alkyl halide. I'm going to treat it with a strong base. And with this strong base, it's going to pull a proton. So what is getting eliminated is the Br and an H. So as it reacts, the H on the alkyl halide ends up on the alcohol. So you make an alkene, an alcohol. The K plus, of course, is your spectator. And here's your leaving group, Br minus. Now, if we have an alcohol, we're going to treat this with the trace of strong acid, H3O plus, and we need to heat it up. And what gets eliminated is the H and the OH. And so this is actually the reverse of the addition reaction we learned with the alkenes. Now substitution reactions, I would like to think of as double replacement reactions because you're used to that from Gen Chem or Intro Chem. And so if we look at a substitution reaction, a nucleophile takes the place of the leaving group. So here is propyl bromide. NaOH is the nucleophile, OH minus specifically, will be taking the place of the Br. Na plus is the spectator, and the leaving group leaves, and there is Br minus. So if you look, there's the double replacement. Now, if we look at t bromide reacting with sodium iodide, again, the I minus takes the place of the Br, and it just does a substitution reaction. When you have an alcohol, the substitution, the Br, will take the place of the OH, and you're going to make water in the process. Now remember, these reactions compete with each other. The most important piece is to be able to re recognize what's going on with your organic reactant and what's going on with your inorganic reactants, which are above and below the arrow. And that's what makes this difficult. But hopefully through the next set of podcasts, you'll try to figure out how these functional groups can be transformed from one to the other and figure out which one wins.